Hi, and welcome to Neat AI. On the last video, I got a fixed topology neural network to evolve a solution to balance an inverted pendulum on a moving cart fixed to a track. And this video looks at implementing the neat solution to the same problem, seeing what the required minimum number of hidden neurons are and what the topology will look like. I also wanted to see if a solution could evolve which would flip up the pendulum from a normal starting position and balance it in the middle of the track. This project came about because I'd been messing around with springs, which led me to coding up a pendulum, which led me to this pretty cool upflip control setup for a double pendulum, which in turn reminded me that I'd never completed the inverted pole in a cart project to test my own network capability. The networks in this case took its time, but eventually managed to find solutions which were quite entertaining. A population of about 100 neural networks were steered by a fitness function, which rewarded keeping the pendulum inverted and in the middle of the track for as long as possible. At the end of each generation, they were each awarded a fitness score and individuals were randomly selected to produce the next generation. Any network could be selected for this step, but the fitter a network was, the more likely it was to be selected. So two random networks then produced an offspring via the standard crossover process for gene mingling, and this step repeated until a new generation was complete. Mutation then occurred across the new generation by randomly adjusting the weights of the connections between neurons, and they're then released into the wild to see if they can do better than the last generation. Speciation is also enabled, which allows for parallel solutions to be explored within the one population. Elitism is enabled, so the best networks are preserved, and only get replaced when something better comes along. And as you can see, over time and over many generations, the system would normally converge on solutions to the problem and was able to keep the pendulum balanced. Up on the left is the network of the fittest member of the population. It has five input neurons, 10 hidden nodes, and one output neuron. The input neurons cover the angle of the bob to the normal in radians, the angular velocity of theta, the cart or anchor position on the track expressed as a value between zero and one, zero being the leftmost edge and one being the right edge, the velocity of the cart, and finally, whether or not the pendulum is in the right spot with the right orientation. If it's inverted within five degrees of the vertical and in the middle of the track, it gets a one. Otherwise, it gets a zero. The fitness of the network increases when it's in the zone, but it's important to note that the network fitness will decrease when it's not in the zone. It will decrease to zero, and this is done to discourage the spinning pendulum solution that always tends to emerge. It's the easiest way for a network to build its fitness, and if I don't penalize it for not being in the zone, it's a solution that dominates the gene pool. A better solution turns out to be learning to balance the network, so it's always in the zone. And this fix allows that to emerge. The output from the network is simply the cart acceleration, which gets added to its velocity, which in turn is used to update the position of the cart on the track. It's also a component of the formula, which is used to determine the angular acceleration of the pendulum bob at any moment in time. I would also normally use some random element in the starting locations of the networks, a small offset to the normal, for example, so they're not exactly vertical, as well as random positions along the track. I do this so the solution isn't locked to an exact starting position. I also have the option to display all networks, a variable subset, a particular species, or just the current fittest network. And I added sliders to the mix to play around with variations on gravity, drag coefficient, rod length, and mass. Mass isn't used here, but it's a component in the double pendulum setup. Coding up a pendulum isn't difficult. I'm just drawing two circles on a screen and then drawing a line between them. The first circle is the anchor point, and when it's not coupled to a moving cart attached to a track, its position is fixed. I drop a vertical line down from its center and pick an angle, let's say 45 degrees. I draw that on the screen and connect the points of the triangle. The length of the hypotenuse is something I fix, let's say 500 pixels. And as it's a right angle triangle, I now have all I need to work out the length of the sides. The one opposite theta and the one adjacent to it. These lengths are the offsets to the anchor point locations, which allow me to determine the location of the bob. Note that in my setup, the point zero, zero is in the top left of the screen. I then connect them with a line and call that the rod. Now for any angle theta and rod length, I can display a pendulum. To make it move, I need to adjust the angle by giving it some velocity. And as I'm dealing with an angle, it's known as angular velocity. 
I simply give it a value and add it to the angle and draw the pendulum. When I put this into a loop, the angle changes at a constant rate and the pendulum moves around in a circle. I've added a frame rate limiter and set it to 60 frames a second. To make it speed up and slow down, it needs to accelerate or decelerate. So I set a value for the acceleration rate and simply add that to the velocity, which of course is added to the angle. With the velocity initially set to zero, the pendulum's angular velocity will slowly increase until it's spinning around faster and faster. That's the basic mechanics of a pendulum. To make it swing like a traditional pendulum, all I need is the correct equations of motion to set the angular acceleration value. And this is it. It's simply gravity divided by the rod length multiplied by the sine of theta. Plug that in and away it goes. I can set the initial angle to anything I want and it'll swing between pi and minus pi. If I set it to zero, it'll hang straight down. The next step involves coupling it to the track. I want the acceleration of the cart to be a component of the pendulum bob's angular acceleration. This will allow the cart's movement to affect the pendulum, which gives the network the ability to control it by manipulating the cart. In this equation, for the angular acceleration of the bob, g is gravity. I simply play around with this variable until I get the behavior I like. L is the length of the rod, which I can scale until it looks good on screen. And the x with the two dots above it is the cart acceleration. One dot would normally denote the first derivative of a variable with respect to time. In our case, that would be the rate of change of the cart position, or its velocity. And two dots is the second derivative, or the rate of change of a rate of change. So it's the cart's acceleration. With all that in place, I simply use the output from the network to control the cart's acceleration, create the population, steer its evolution via the fitness function, and let it evolve. It found solutions simply by mutating the weights of the node connections. What I display on screen are the strength of the signals going through the connections at any one time, and adjusting the colors based on the sign, positive or negative. The nodes themselves light up based on the output from the activation function at the node itself. While this fixed topology network worked well when it came to balancing the pendulum, I really wanted a solution that was capable of starting in this position, and that could flip the pendulum up and start balancing it. I used the same network to try and get this to work, but it never quite managed it. It would get close, but kept failing. This network uses 10 neurons in the hidden layer and it's fully connected. I picked 10 at random just because it looked kinda right. But I have no idea if this setup failed to flip up and balance the pendulum because there were too many neurons or not enough. Or maybe there needed to be more hidden layers or fewer connections. Or maybe it's just because I got bored and didn't give it enough time. We'll never know. Honestly, I didn't really try too hard to get it to work as I wanted to switch on the neat approach and see what that could do. A neat neural network starts with no assumptions about what the final network will look like. During the mutation stage, not only are the connection weights randomly mutated, but also the network structure can change. New nodes and connections can sometimes randomly be created or disabled. This can lead to vastly different behavior. Within the one population, groups of similar networks split into different species, and they all evolve in parallel, allowing multiple solutions to be pursued within the one population. Species that don't continue to improve tend to die out, leaving room for new species to emerge over time. And the final solution tends to be quite efficient, with just the right number of neurons and connections needed to solve the problem. In fact, it nearly managed it with no hidden neurons at all. Zooming through some of these early generations in the evolutionary process, the solution that remained dominant was the one with no hidden neurons. There are over 100 networks in the population, with many species pursuing their own solutions within that population, but as I have elitism switched on, they will need to produce something better to make it to the top of the pack. Nothing emerges to beat this version in the early stages of the competition, and by about generation 20, it's figuring out the basics of balancing itself. By generation 40, the solution is found, and the network that got there has only five hidden neurons. It balances the inverted pendulum by rapidly adjusting the cart's acceleration, flipping it back and forth. And finally, the self-inverting solution was pursued. It turns out that the topology of the network for both the inverted and self-inverting solutions was the same. No extra complexity was required to self-invert. But it did take about twice as many generations to find the solution. Earlier versions of the software also found solutions. This one, for example, had the same number of hidden layer neurons, just in a slightly different configuration. This, though, is probably the nicest example of the upflip mechanism as it stays away from the track boundaries.
thanks for watching.